and let's go to our problem of the day. Problem of the day says we're going to solve the equation for y. Well, there's a messy equation there in there, folks. To find the slope and y-intercept of the line's graph. So we're already given a hint that's supposed to make a line. So let's look at it again one more time. Solve the equation for y to find the slope and y-intercept of the line's graph. That equation is 2 times in parentheses, messy stuff, 5x minus 3y. Close that parenthesis, plus 9 equals to, looks like 8x minus 3 on the other side. Let's see what we're going to do with this craziness, all right? We're going to look at it one more time. We have to get this y by itself. There's a lot of stuff that's keeping me from getting the y by its lonesome here. I need to deal with this 2. My goodness, I also need to deal with 5x. It might even change on us here. I got a, oh goodness, let's just take this thing one step at a time. All right, everybody out there ready to roll? Write that little equation down at home or at your computer, wherever you might be. And let's do some distributive property time. We're going to take 2 times the 5x and 2 times the negative 3. I know I said it's just like there are parentheses there, just because x and a y is involved doesn't mean we can't handle it, all right? So we've got 10x, looks good to me. And kick along here, we're going to have minus 6y. Finished with the parentheses, do not say 2 times 9, don't want to go there. We're going to keep the 9, however, it's not going away, it just doesn't need to be distributed into. On the other side, all is protected, we have 8x minus your 3. And you say, Ernie, where do we go from here? I think it would be nice if we move the x's on over. Let's get them to where they need to be. Remember, we're trying to look for a slope-intercept form to find y equals mx plus b. So as we look here, let's go ahead and move that 10x. It's positive, so we're going to subtract, going to make it negative. We're going to do the same craziness over here to the 8x part. And we're going to subtract that 10x from both sides. little subtraction property of equality going for us here. And you know what? Your 10x's go away. That's why we chose that. We've got minus 9y plus your 9. How about minus 6y plus your 9? And over here we have not 8x anymore, but what? 8 minus 10, which is going to give us negative 2x. And we got the minus 3 just going along for the ride. So the only things that changed, well, were the x's. That's what we dealt with first. Now, remember what we said, we want to get y by itself. We've still got a 9, we've still got a negative 6. Oh, that y did change, didn't it? That's because we distributed. Don't forget, you got to do that. Now, let's subtract that 9, kick it over here. How about it? Minus 9, minus 9, both sides. That's more subtraction, property equality. We've got a lot of subtraction going on here today. Negative 6y over here. Now, notice I put the negative 9 under the 3. Don't, don't tack it into the 2, it's all about the negative 3 there, or the minus 3. And we got minus 2x, and that's going to give us minus 12. Because basically we're 3 in the hole, we go 9 further. And we are now 12 in the hole, or at a negative, or a minus 10. Easy? Oh yes, it is now. Let's divide everything through by, aha, uh -huh, negative 6. You say, Ernie, why are you dividing? Why did you not go ahead and add 6 like you did with those, you know, you did some stuff with the x's, you took the whole thing. Well, because I'm basically wanting to get y by itself. So what is happening, I'm trying to remove the negative 6. And the negative 6 is hooked in there by division or multiplication. Yeah, it's multiplication there, right? Negative 6 times y. So we're going to divide to unhook that. A little ahead of myself at times there. And you see what's going on? Lots of sign changes, what's going on. And fractions, well, some of them are actually going away. Say so goodbye to the sixes there. We got y equals, and looks like a negative 2 over negative 6. Remember, that's division. So we're basically saying negative 2 divided by negative 6, which goes positive. And that's positive 1 third. I'm going to put it there because I'd like to have that 1 third popping up. And we'll finish off with plus 2. All right. Now, you say, does that answer the question? <laughs> we got y by itself, didn't we? In this case, what is the slope and what is that intercept? We like to call it b, but I'm going to go a little one step a little bit further with that. Our slope is this little guy next to the x right there. Everybody see it? Da -da -da. Lift with me there. We have one third, and the intercept is this little guy, but what does it represent? It's a y intercept. So we're going to name it as a coordinate. And we're going to go ahead and put the 2 in there as the y value. But you say, well, what's the x, Ernie? The x, because it's an intercept, should be at 0. So there's your slope, and there is your y-intercept. Now, 
For those of you who aren't buying into me yet, there, let's take a look at it on the graphing calculator. How about it? Let's put a graphing calculator moment up here. And we have, let's see if it's going to work. Um, let's put a little paper down there. It may help. Hang on, my friends. We're going to y equals. It's definitely been like a Monday today, but I know it's a Wednesday, isn't it? <laughs> let's see. We have y equals one-third. That means one divided by. And then we got an x attached to it. And we got a plus two. And let's enter and see what that graph looks like. It's supposed to have a slope of one-third, and it's supposed to pass through zero, two. Look at that. There we go. Right there is our zero, two moment. And it looks to me like it's going to go up over one, excuse me, up one and then over three. We can count those out about right there is where it goes. And it's going to go up one more and over three. You get the idea. So the slope is one third. Remember that's that rise over run. There's the crossing point, the zero two. Life is good. We have what we're looking for there. You know, sometimes people wonder, well, if you put a zero two back here, does it work? Because it should, shouldn't it? So if I put a 0 in for x and I put a 2 in for y, all right, let's see what happens. Put a 0, did I say, for x and a 2 in for y? Well, let's see. We have um, 0 and 2. We're going to get this right in a minute. So it's going to give me 0, and it's going to give me 2 times negative 6 in there. So that's negative 12. Add that to 9, we get negative 3. Put a 0 over here. No, no 2 to be had, is there? So we got 0 minus 3, we got negative 3 also. So we know that point satisfied. This was an easy way to check back through. Did you get where you were going? And of course the slope, we just had to look at the graphics and understand it's a rise and a run situation. So there you have it, problem of the day.